Hey Guitar Fam, how's it going? It's Nate here and the results for the 2023 Guitar Fam Christmas song collaboration are in and uh, the results are Holly Jolly Christmas. That's our song we're doing together this year. Um, despite all the lobbying, lobbying for a very close second place, Grandma got run over by a reindeer. It'll be in the voting next year, that one, so don't worry about that. I uh, just wanted to make a quick video showing you how to play the song and um, don't worry if, if you feel like, oh, I'm a beginner, I can't do this, I'm not gonna be good enough, do not worry about that. If all you do is this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know, change with the chords, that's totally fine. I'm gonna give you some options for the strumming and uh, that are kind of progressive from very pretty easy to more and more advanced. We'll get into all that later in this video and if you wanna see a full performance, go to the end, I play through it and um, I'll, I'll start off very simple and then get more and more uh, progressively uh, more advanced as the play along goes along. Now, you may be wondering yourself, well, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I'm either embarrassed or I don't know how to deal with the technology. First off, don't be embarrassed. We're here to learn and have fun together no matter what level you're at. Second of all, um, if you have any problems with the tech side of things, just email me, support at guitarfam.com and I'll help you out. Probably the best way to do this for you is to just set up your phone, hit record. You can email it to us or probably the easiest way to do this is to just upload your video to YouTube and set it to unlisted if you you know don't want the whole world seeing it and then, uh, send us the link. It will be public at the end because I'm going to put all the videos together as it is a Christmas collaboration so everybody will get their own little time in the spotlight. Before we get into it, all of the lesson resources, obviously the video, uh, the tab, and the jam track that goes with this version of this and this key and everything are on the Guitar Fam site. So if you're not a Guitar Fam member yet, go to guitarfam.com and create your complimentary account. You'll get access to all that stuff, plus the first module of all of our premium courses too. Let's get into it. The original key for the original recording, the Rebecca Lives version, is in C major and it modulates to C sharp halfway through the song. Uh, we're not gonna do the modulation and we're not gonna do it in C to avoid as many bar chords as possible so as many people can participate uh, as possible. So we're gonna do it in the key of G. And this uses almost every diatonic chord in the key of G. Uh, let's just go through that real quick. So in the key of G major, your one is a G major. Your two is an A minor. Your three is a B minor. Don't panic if you can't do bar chords, we'll give you an alternative. Your four is a C major. D major is your five. E minor is your six. And then seven would be F sharp diminished. Don't worry about that one though. We're not, that was the only one that's not used. Uh, the only other chord that you need to worry about is a secondary dominant, a five, a five, or an A major, or an A seven. Whichever one you want to use there is fine. So just note that you have to use an A major as well as an A minor. So we'll get those chords down. Uh, if you need to work on any of them, you know, just put the time in on the individual chords. Um, if you can't play a B minor yet or B minor bar chord, this one. Don't worry, you can get by just doing a G with a B in the bass. All you have to do is play a normal G. Just take your finger off the top, or sorry, the bottom string, the low sixth string there, and then don't play the high E string either. Just play the middle strings. So you have this B, you're fretting here on the second fret of the A string, and then your third finger, or whatever finger is hitting your, uh, fretting the third fret of the B string. You're just playing that. Second fret of the A string, open D, open G, third fret of the B instead of a B minor chord, but this is a good opportunity to go ahead and get your B minor bar chord down too. Or you can use, alternatively, you can use a B power chord as well. Okay, let's talk uh, strumming patterns now, and feel free to use whichever strumming pattern your current you know, skill level on the guitar is at. Uh, first off, you can do just whole notes. If you're just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that'll work for most of the song. There's some times when you need some half notes, but feel free to keep it as simple as possible. Um, probably what I'd recommend doing if you're, you've been playing guitar for a little while, use at least quarter notes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we're at 140 beats per minute. So even quarter notes, it's a little bit fast if you're a beginner. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the second thing you can do is go to eighth notes. But if you move to straight eighth notes, what you have to do is watch out because it's swung eighth notes. You can't just play one and two and three and four. You have to put the swing fill in there. So one. Okay, so it's the difference between this straight, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And if you want to think about it, this is the same feel as you get in a lot of blues songs. It feels kind of like a, a tire that's flat on one side, walk, rolling down the road. That 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 that. Just listen to the original, and you'll hear that swing feel in there. Okay, so if I'm going along and I do swung eighth notes, this is how it's going to sound. 
And you're probably gonna notice something else I'm doing there. I'm on the one and I'm playing it down up on the lower strings, just like the you know bottom two or three strings, E, A, and D strings. And then on the two and I'm going two and on the higher strings. And that just gives the uh, strumming pattern some shape. So those two things, the swing fill and then giving the strumming pattern some shape, one and two. will help make this song a little more lively and a little less boring is for a strumming pattern. So instead of just going like this, one, two, three, four, put the swing in there. And then one, two, and I'm accenting the twos and the fours pretty heavily. So those are the stages of the strumming pattern that I'll recommend using in this song. Uh, do whichever one you're most comfortable with. All right, all we have to do is look at the uh, chord progressions throughout each part of the song. And there's an intro, the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus. Those are really the only parts we have to worry about. And a lot of them overlap, a lot of them have some similarities. And you could do you know, just the chord progressions that we're gonna go through, but I'm also gonna show you some walk downs that you can throw in here and there if you want to, once you get the basics down. So the intro and the verses are the exact same. So once you have the intro learned, you can play the verses too. And verse one and two are the exact same. Okay, so we have three measures of G. So just count yourself off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. G, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. So that's three measures. And that's the way the jam track for this starts off too. You have two measures of uh, jingle bells to count you in. So three measures of G. Then you have four measures of D, and when I play uh, D, I kind of reach up them with my thumb to make sure the little E and A strings are muted because I don't want those ringing out and it's on the top four strings, so. So far to count that, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. And I'm doing the same idea, I'm just hitting the, you know, the bottom, the lowest two strings in pitch the D and the G strings on the one and then two and, and keeping it swung one and two and three and four and two and three and four. And then after four measures of the D, you just go back to G for one measure to finish off this main progression for the intro and the verses. So um, let me play the whole thing for you. So it's three measures of G, four measures of the D, and then one more measure of G. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. G. Okay, so that's the beginning of the intro with a little instrumental and everything. Then it gets you into verse one, which is just that same exact chord progression two times. So play that exact same thing twice and then I'll get you through verse one. Okay, after you get through uh, verse one, you come to what I call the pre-chorus and that's the part that says, oh, the mistletoe. And this is where the chord, the hardest part of the chord progression throughout the whole song, right? You go to a C, a four chord, for one measure. And then you go to a B minor for one measure. And you can do just, again, you can just do quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you can do the swung eighths. Okay, and instead of doing this B minor, again, you can use a G over B, or you could do a B power chord. So you can go. So it doesn't sound exact, but it's enough to get you through it. And you can also do the power chord too, so. Okay, so after those two measures, you have a big two, five, one progression, and you have two measures of A minor for your two, one and two, and then to go to a D for beats three and four, and three and four, and, and then you have one measure of G, the one chord. Okay, that's the fastest part of the whole song as far as progressions go. After that, you have one measure of A minor, one and two, and three, and four, and four, and four. And then a measure of E minor, one and two, and three, and four. And here is where your secondary dominant, your five of five, or your A major chord. You can either do A major for one measure or A seven, whichever one you want. And then a D major chord for one measure. Okay, and that's the whole little pre-course. Uh, so let me play that whole thing for you. And this is obviously the toughest part of the song because the chord changes are coming so fast. Here you go. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, three, four, C, B minor. And that gets us into the chorus of the song, which is very similar uh, kind of to the verse and a mix of the pre-chorus as far as the, the lyrics and the chord progression go. Uh, so it just starts off with three measures of a G chord, just like uh, the intro and the verses do. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you switch to a D this time instead of the verse being four measures, D is only for two measures this time. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, back to a G for one measure, one, two, three, four. Then you have a big two, five, one to finish off the course. And it's uh, two beats of A minor, one, two, and, then a D for two beats, three, and four, and, and then G for one measure, one, two, three, four. Okay, uh, so just take this one little section at a time Especially if you're newer to the guitar, if you need, you know, if your chord changes aren't exactly up to speed, just take it one section at a time and work on that. You have, should have plenty of time uh, to get this done by uh, for submissions for the December live stream, which is going to be early in December, I believe. So um, let me play that course for you, just to give you a taste for how it uh, plays out when you play it up to speed. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, so that is the chorus. Uh, at the end of the chorus, you're gonna see the words dal segno, which means to go up to the little squiggly um, sign at the beginning of the verse. So you're gonna basically go back to the verse and play the entire song all the way through up to this point. You're just skipping the intro. You don't do the intro again, you do everything else again. So verse two, pre-chorus two, and then chorus two, and then you have the outro. So play everything you played again, and then tag an outro on after you do the little. Do, 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 do. On the chorus, chorus two, you just stay on a G throughout the entire rest of the song as it fades on. It's about six measures. All right, now let's talk about some walk downs and walk ups you can put into this if you've been wanting to get into that type of thing. Uh, I'll just walk you through and I just kind of improvised the walk downs in the play along part that you'll see later at the end of the video. But I'll show you some of the things that I was thinking. Go to the verse and if you have three measures of G, I'm using a walk up to get to that D in uh, measure four of the verse. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one. On one, I hit a G note on the third fret of the low E string. And then two, I hit an open A, three, B on the second fret of the A, four is a D, and I'm just walking up the scale G, A, B, C, and that puts me in a perfect spot to come down on a D on the open D string in the next measure. So that's the first. I'll walk up that I think about. So. And I go right back into the strumming. And the, another thing that I'm doing here, just to give it a little more flavor the second time through, uh, you know, verse two, uh, pre chorus two, uh, chorus two, is I'm alternating bass a little bit. So. so you can do that too if you like on each chord. Um, the next uh, little walk down that I do is just going from D to a G at the end of the verse. So if I have uh, It's the exact invert, inverse of the first one I did. I just gone one, two, three, four, one. On the fourth measure of that D chord there, I just did a D note on one, and then a C note there on the third fret of the A string on two, three is a B, and then open A on four. And that puts me in a perfect spot in the next measure when we change to that G chord to play an open G chord. All right, I use that same walk down from a D to a G at the end of the pre-chorus. So if you have a... A minor, B minor, A7, 
as soon as I go to the D, I just kind of, I don't hit the full D chord, I just go D, C, B, A on one, two, three, four. And that sets me up to go to the G for the chorus. And you can put that same walk up in the chorus if you want to. So if you have your three measures of G. And you see how I'm just alternating a little bit of the bass lines too, calling out on the first beat of any chord change, I hit the bass note. So like on a G, I'll hit the bass note, that G right there on the third fret, and the low E string on it. On the A minor, hit the A string on that one, one, two, and then on the D, three, four, and then the last measure of the chorus. Okay, that is it. Please do not hesitate. Uh, to film a video of yourself and send it in for the collaboration doesn't matter if it's phenomenal or just you know Barely squeaking by is passable playing the important part and the, the really the goal of this is to have fun playing real music together All right, if you have any questions as you progress Just you know leave a comment on this video or email us support at guitarfem.com And I'll be looking forward to sharing this collaboration video with you in early ish December. I'll let you know when Have a home.